Okay, here's a graph of the original function. Uh, it looks like we're headed towards the idea that there's a relative minimum when x is 1. There's the graph. And the question is, how do we arrive at that using the second derivative test? So here's the original function. The domain of that original function, by the way, is x is greater than or equal to 0 because you cannot take the square root of a negative number. When we find f prime, we'll get 3x squared. 1 half times the negative 6 is negative 3, x to the minus 1 half. While we're at it, we'll find the second derivative. 2 times 3 is 6x, plus 3 halves, x to the minus 3 halves. To find the critical numbers, we want to know when does the first derivative equal 0, or when is the first derivative undefined. So here we are setting the first derivative equal to zero. We note that x cannot be zero. So x equals zero is also a critical number. But if we multiply through by x to the one half to clear the equation of fractions, we'll get three x to the five halves minus three equals zero. Add three to both sides and then divide by 3. We get x to the 5 halves equal 1. To isolate x, we raise both sides to the 2 fifths power, but 1 to the 2 fifths is just 1. So there's your critical number. And we'll make note of the fact that when x equals 0, this first derivative actually approaches negative infinity because we get numbers like minus 3 over 1 1,000th, one which is minus 3,000. So we have a vertical tangent line right here at x equals 0, not a relative minimum. OK, so we want to put this critical number into the second derivative and determine whether the result gives us a positive number or a negative number. If it gives us zero, we do have to resort to the first derivative test, which the first derivative test is like this guy right here. F prime tells us whether F is increasing or decreasing, and we will get something that looks like this, which tells us we have a relative minimum. But if we use the second derivative test, We'll put 1 into the second derivative, and we get 6 plus 3 halves. 1 to the negative 1 half is just 1. 1 to any power is 1. And that's positive, which tells us that on the interval where f double prime is positive, which this 1 is there, we have concave upward, a smiley face, which tells us that when x is 1, horizontal tangent line, we must have a relative minimum. And there it is. If we want to actually find out the y-coordinate of the relative minimum, we put 1 into the original function. We get 1 minus 6 minus 3 is indeed this negative 8. OK, there you go. Hope that helps. If you have any questions, uh, post a comment.